And good morning, live from Tennessee, Nashville area this morning. So good to have you joining us, and we've got a great show ahead. We'll talk about it in a minute. But first of all, if you're joining me today, make sure that you let me know where you're from. Just kind of write it down there on the the notes, and uh, it'll automatically appear to us, and we'll see you on screen. I'd love to welcome you personally. We got a great show today. Uh, Morton Storgard will be joining me in just a minute as my co-host, and he'll also bring us uh, an update from the project in Kenya that we've been following. It's getting more and more exciting, and we have some some footage to show you from Kenya today as well. So that'll be cool. We have a panel of discussion today where we're going to talk about songwriting and uh, how does it work and all of that. We have Greg Manier from the old Crucified Band and uh, then in the last few years from Applehead. We have Jamie McCavanaugh from Wedding Party. Parker Matthews, you may not know Parker yet, but a uh, great artist, solo artist, and um, all great songwriters. And I thought we'd have them join with Morton and I to talk about songwriting. So that's cool. So folks, once again, if you're joining us, please let me know where you're from. You know, we get people from all over the world, and it's so great to have you here today. Also, Logan Thompson will be with us a little later on in the show from Symphony of Heaven, great band. If you don't know them yet, you will. And uh, Steve says, good morning, Pastor Bob. Steve from Connecticut watching. Great friends there in Connecticut. Good to have you here with us, Steve. And uh, folks, once again, check in with us. Let me know where you're from and uh, let me know how you're doing this morning. Holly, good morning to you. Good to see you this morning. People are waking up and joining Pastor Bob this morning. And our good friend Emma uh, is here from Montana, from my home state. Uh, good morning, she says. Have a blessed day. Emma's a good friend of the ministry and the, the mother to the guys in Mangled Carpenter, by the way. Great, great band. Matt is here uh, from uh, just right here. He goes to sanctuary here in our facilities. And good morning to you, Matt. Good to see you today. A.V., our good friend, he said, how are you? Happy 12 years of Thousand Foot Crutch. The end is where we begin. I love that. And I love Thousand Foot Crutch. Great band, aren't they? Um, good, good stuff. Rodney Jeffries is here today, for one of our great friends in Australia. And Rodney, thank you for staying up. And he says, morning, it's the first part of the morning there. It's after midnight now in, uh, there in, in Australia. Jonas is here checking in from Kenya. And we'll be seeing Jonas in a clip in just a few minutes. Speaking of Kenya, speaking of the project, let's welcome my co-host, Morton. Morton Storgard is here with me today. Good morning, Morton. Good to see you. Good morning. Morning, guys. There he yeah. is. So, Morton, the last time I talked to you, you were in Denmark. The time yeah. I talked with you before that, you were in Kenya. And tell us where you are today. Yeah, the same spot as last time. I'm still, still in Denmark. But um, tomorrow I'm actually flying to uh, Chicago to meet with Andreas, the metal deacon that you guys yep. know from, uh, from the pot here, from the sanctuary. Awesome. Maybe. Yeah. And we're excited for that project. And folks, we'll show you that clip. And in just a minute. Kyle is here from Holland, Michigan. <laughs> and uh, great friends are joining us today, Morton. So Morton, for you today, I, I am drinking from my <laughs> mug. Simon Strunza gave me this mug a few years ago. Oh yeah, Simon is a good guy. Oh, that's awesome. That's a good Viking coach. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I so, sure brought the cup that you gave Denmark, me. Yeah, yeah, in the show. Yeah. Can I say, folks, that I am drinking the best coffee in the world, and uh, this is our newest blend. It is called Jamaican Meloni, and uh, it's a great blend. It's my second favorite 
Morton, my my very favorite is is our Joe Mama blend, but whew, this is the second favorite, and awesome. we've got ten coffee blends now in all, so um, it's expanding. And folks, there's a the merchandise right there, sanctuaryinternational.com slash merch. Or you can go to wearemetalwearefamily.com. Either one of those will take you to all of our merch and all of our coffee. And uh, we're excited that we have so many blends now. Again, the, the sales for all of this go to help with um, the food ministry here and really helps to support it. David Kelly White is here from Littleton, Colorado, 52 degrees there. I think it's a little warmer here and a little colder probably in Denmark. Are you having warmer weather yet, Morton? Yeah, it's it's warming up, but um, I don't know exactly what it is in Fahrenheit, but it's, uh, it's still a little chilly here. But in yes. a few weeks, Maria keeps saying when I'm back from the States, so in a week, summer will be here. So there you go. Good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. Well, our friend from Argentina was just here. Logan Thompson says good morning. And Logan, we're excited to have you on the show in just a yeah. little bit. Good morning, Logan, Logan. Symphony of Heaven, great band. And he'll tell us uh, what's going on with the band. You know, speaking of what's going on, Morton, um, this project that we've been talking about for a few weeks now is just keeps getting more exciting, doesn't it? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we're going to talk about songwriting today, and I'll have you share more yeah. of what that looks like for you guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, Kirk Martin is here, and Kirk is a great friend of mine, um, great friend of Dave Ellison from Megadeth, and for, uh, a lot of us, we, um, we love him dearly. Um, he has a who's who from his past as well. Um, very satanic, destructive band and found the Lord. And um, I won't mention the band names. I'm not sure if he'd want me to, but you would know who he is. But anyway, Kirk, blessings to you. Andreas is here. Andreas. Awesome. Good morning, Andreas. Well, Andreas is about to be in this clip. So why don't we uh, why don't we play the clip right now? Do you want to set it up at all, Morton? Is there anything we need to say about it before we watch it? Uh, I I think it's good. I, I'm I'm not sure I've seen the final cut. It's Jonas is doing okay. the video stuff, so I'm excited to see what he put together. But um, I'm right. sure it's about a songwriting yeah. process actually. So it should be a uh, should be a good fit for today. Good. Yeah. So let's play the clip. John, if you can there. to go we uh, we have a signal through into the computers ready to start tracking so uh, we'll start the day and uh, let's see what comes out of it oh yeah this is gonna be awesome guys wish you were here <laughs> day one of tracking drums and bass. Uh, the rhythm guitar parts are laid already by Morton. We are finishing up track four, just day one. Just like last time, progress is going unbelievably well. The tones that we're getting 
are totally amazing. Trying some strange studio tricks, strange places to uh, record, get vocal reflections, and it's going very, very well. Oh, yeah. I am working on some guitar tracks here from Denmark, while Terry and Jonas are laying down tracks for the pre-recordings. So they're doing the bass and drums right now, actually until a few hours ago, because it's two hours uh, ahead there, so they are probably in bed now. It's a little late here, and I'm working on some of the guitar lead tracks for some of the songs that we haven't finished yet. So it's pretty exciting because in a few weeks I'm going to visit Andreas in the US. So stuff is happening in Kenya, Denmark and Illinois right now. That's pretty cool. Andreas here from the States, excited about this project. And it's just, uh, we're blown away uh, how God has brought us together. And uh, yeah, so Morten is coming over here to Illinois and we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Uh, so thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, we're trying to, get out of the way and being led by the Holy Spirit and then also have uh, high expectations and uh, pressing on because uh, yeah, it, 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 something's happening. So thank you. It just this has just come together supernaturally, really, hasn't it? Yeah, it definitely feels like the Lord has a finger in this. Otherwise, we are, I mean, we would never even have met each other. It's, uh, it's, it is, it is pretty crazy to be doing music this way. I've never played with somebody outside of Denmark before. So uh, doing this across three continents, it's a, it's a pretty special experience and also, um, also calls for, another way to write together you can say which i'm sure we'll talk about today yeah yes well let's bring our panel on shall we and to join us um we have uh parker and greg and jamie there's parker there's greg good morning guys and there's jamie good to see right. you guys. hey jamie so parker is a a solo artist pretty much um pretty cool stuff and in just a minute we'll put his info up on the screen uh you know greg he's been here with us before originally from the crucified and now applehead jamie here on our staff and uh jamie from wedding party uh wrote a whole lot of songs and continues to write uh one of the guys that's kind of putting together a lot of new material for for our worship team here so welcome guys and today i'd really like to talk about songwriting um everyone who writes music is a little different they process a little different i know people that tell me that they can't write good music unless they're depressed first um and then i'd have people on the other end of the spectrum who say you know, I have to be all prayed up. I have to feel the joy of the Lord. I have to go forward with a little different feeling. And uh, I'm, I guess my first question to all of you, whoever would like to speak first, is what do you feel like uh, needs to happen for you personally to kind of get in the groove of songwriting? Anybody? How does that process work? That's a loaded question, I know. Anyone like to take it first? I'll go first, Bob. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> it's funny for me, there really is no rhyme or reason other than needing to be um, kind of motivated and in the mood to do it. Um, you know, uh, other than that, I wouldn't say there's so much of a, a process in doing it other than just wanting to do it, you know? And um, that's the beauty about recording at home now is, you know, you can, you can go into your room and um, if you're in the mood to do it, you can do it. And if nothing's striking, then you shut it all off and you come back the next day. Mm. Um, so that's it really for me. I mean, you know, un un unless um, most of the times, I, I have an idea 
to work with, um, usually starting with a, a guitar riff, um, sometimes with a lyrical idea, and then, you know, ask myself, well, what, what do these lyrics sound like musically? But uh, you got to be in the mood, you know, and um, certainly can pray for that. And sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. So, Greg, you just you just released a new Applehead album. Tell me how songwriting has changed for you from the original Applehead or from the original um, Crucified music to all the way to today with Applehead. Do you see a, a progression? Is it pretty much the same? What does it look like? Well, back in the band days, you know, you had four guys um, in a room. And well, we had four guys in a room and um, also have four opinions, which can be good, but can also be very bad. So, um, you know, <laughs> it, everyone's got to be pleased with it. Um, so now I, I love recording at home because I can just, you know, for the most part, write for myself. If I like it, I like it and I'm happy to record it. If no one else on the planet likes it, then oh well, you know, and that's kind of how I approach it. Just um, write and record songs that I find interesting and, um, you know, hope people like it. Um, but I, I would say, you know, there there is a, a con to that in that, um, you know, having other opinions certainly can help. And also, you know, working by myself for the most part um jamie the bass player we're, we're co-writing two or three songs for this next next record but the first you know the first four or five that are already recorded were just written by me um so it can be good to have uh you know other people to bounce ideas off of and you know someone could say yeah that really sucks um <laughs> You know, I mean, one day, one day I would like to actually work with a producer, which I've never, never in, in all my years had the opportunity to do, to, uh, really? to even with the crucified that all that was self-produced every bit of it. And the first yeah. apple, um, when it came down to it, it was really, um, you know, me or a band in the studio that didn't really know what they were doing and just put it together the best they could. So yeah. Never have I worked with a, a producer to say, well, let's work on this arrangement or maybe this melody could be improved or the lyrics can be improved or, or guitar parts or something like that. So that's mm. what it's me. It's just, uh, and I've learned a lot over the years on how to write better, you know, how to craft better songs and, um, you know, put things together that fit better in a production of a record. Um, Absolutely. But it's, it's for me at least it's still a hundred percent homegrown wow i like that <laughs> yeah I, that's awesome Homegrown is really I, important it would be uh, nice point to actually actually work with a, a professional yes <laughs> and i'm hoping to but if you know <laughs> not the way god has it planned out then fine i'll just keep plugging along as best as i can yes absolutely Parker, what do you think? Well, I think it's cool that uh, I really relate to the like DIY do it yourself sort of mentality of like, if you can't find the right producer to work with, you're just going to do it on your own. That's what yeah. I've been. That's kind of been my musical journey is a lot of like, like I picked up guitar because I wanted to write songs and I wanted to have a band and I didn't know the first thing about guitar, but I was like, if I can't find a guitar player, I guess I'll be the guitar player same thing happened where I couldn't find a singer. So I was like, I guess I'll have to learn how to sing. And now I'm at the point where like, I can't find the right producer. I guess I'm going to have to learn how to produce. So mm -hmm. like, I really relate to that sort of uh, against all odds, you know? Oh, that's awesome. It is awesome. So Parker, you, um, you're doing pretty well on, on uh, Spotify, on some For of sure. the places that your music is Parker, the bandit. Um, and just great stuff. Thank you. We, we asked the question originally, what kind of a mindset do you have when you go into writing music? And I, I'd be interested to know what you think about that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, so when, when I first started writing, I realized I couldn't write unless I was like angry. 
Um, so I would I would have melody ideas and like chord progression ideas, and I'd have to like make little voice memos and come back to them the next time somebody pissed me off. And so that was kind of my my <laughs> writing process for a really long time. Like I I actually had to be mad to be able to write. Um, but as I progressed as a writer and as I met other um, awesome songwriters and got to kind of pick their brains, I've learned that it's not so much of like, like, I feel like a lot of creators like wait until they're in the mood. Like you got to wait till inspiration hits. Um, but from what I've been told and what I've kind of experienced recently, creativity is technically in your brain as a muscle. And so it's, it's kind of like any other muscle where like the more you flex it and the more you work it, the stronger it gets. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I heard from um, a famous songwriter was uh, he writes a song every single day, whether he likes it, whether he's in the mood for it or not. And um, just keeping the creativity muscle flexed, it creates, uh, you know, you end up creating more and it kind of raises your odds of creating something that you like and that might resonate with other people, you know? I, I think that's interesting. Writing a song every day. Have you ever tried that? Yeah, I try to at least write a poem once a day. Just really? it, just some sort of verse, just something. Wow, that's interesting. Mm. It's yeah, and that's, uh, creativity, flexing the muscle of of uh, creativity is a really good point of view. I like that. Jamie, you did a whole different style of music. One of the very first Christian Gothic bands out. I guess we would call it basically goth. Uh, wedding party, some great success there. Um, you guys had a little different way of writing, though, as well. Talk about that for a minute. Oh, uh, we did. You know, it, it's it's wild to hear the very the different varied ways that people write music. You know, for 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 us, it was mostly, um, you know, you're put in the position of God. Why? You know what I mean? Like it's that intense um innermost being you know the the desperate times uh uh depressed times um you know try the process of getting through something you know whatever that may be and uh yeah will and i we you know as much as butting heads, we also meshed so stinking well, but, um, but yeah, th that's, that's where I come from when I, when I write music, it's just, I, I think of David, yeah. it, w it wasn't just him creating yeah. worship. It was coming from his, I mean, inner gut, yes. you know, where everything was just so, it, it, you know, one way or the other, super happy or super angry and mad, you know, um, and that's what, that's what he wrote, you know, when he thought, thought about the Lord and everything, the Lord brought him to that place. But, so that's kind of, that's kind of what, where, where I was, where I always come from. Um, it's a very emotional place. Well, uh, Jimmy, let's talk about that a little bit, because I think as I've watched so many bands create, I don't think I've watched any band birth music like you guys. And I would call it birthing the music. It was torment almost sometimes yeah. as the songs would come out and they were born. Can you think of an example that you could share with us? Um, yeah, there was uh, there's many times that that actually happened. I, I guess the um, I, I remember when we 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 played Cornerstone one year and. Uh, we ended up coming back. That was actually the first year we ever played back in 1997. And then we come back and to the waking up to the news that Will's brother had killed himself. And I mean, the extreme, you know, feelings of, of that, the entire year was hell on earth. And it was, so this is entire birthing, an album was created in the middle of it. And it was just, I mean, the depths of, you know, horrible pain and <laughs> something beautiful came from it, but it, there are so many stories. I don't think that we have a song that doesn't have a crazy story behind it. Yeah. Um, it, it, they were all like that. And, and that's how, like you were saying, it was birthed each one of them, you know? And, uh, I, 
I, I want to say, like, do I prefer that over not, you know, because, and I don't know. It's that ultimate question of, you know, would you do it the same way? Uh, yeah. And I don't think there's any other way for me. I don't think it's possible any other way, unfortunately. So it's great. Yeah, uh, it's, but it's a deep process. And, you know, I remember, obviously, you guys were very much associated with Eric and, and um Savior Machine, he produced the album, but Will and Eric pretty much had the same voice. He, again, lock himself in a room for days and almost get depressed to produce an album. And I saw very similar things happen with you guys. Yeah, you know, I, there's one thing I do want to mention. If you, it, you know, I, I, I was able to witness something, I think that was probably one of the most genuine recordings um, I've ever seen in my life or ever heard. And I remember when Will was laying down vocal tracks, he had a photo album in front of him. And as he would sing, he would turn the pages and there were just pictures of, you know, his family, his friends and everything else. And he would sing his guts out, whatever he was singing about. And his emotions would come, you know, come through and he'd just start bawling his eyes out. And then we'd have to start over again. And then, you know, and, and no one mind because this was genuine, some, you know, being recorded in real time. And I just believe that how you record it is how it's received. Uh, because after I've seen that, the, the way that it touched people, I think it was that. It was that genuineness. There was nothing... There was no like, let's do this a million times to get it perfectly right. It was, let's do this as many times as this guy bleeds. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's and it was, yeah, it was incredible. So touch, it touched my life for the, for the rest of my life. It was unreal. I, I've never seen anything like it. Do you, and you guys, anyone who wants to answer here, um, do you ever feel like a song comes to you so powerfully that you almost feel like you're not the one writing it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely happened before. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have a story? Self within like 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. And you realize that it's a little, a little um, out of your own realm that you feel right. something supernatural almost going on. Yeah. Yeah. Morton, you guys wrote 15 songs in four days. You've never done that in, in all of your in all of your band history and in all the times that you've been writing. Um, that was yeah a pretty big experience for you. Yeah, that, that was a that was a very special experience because normally when I write music, it's uh, you know I'll I'll have my guitar down from the wall almost every single day. And if I don't, I'll just, you know, sing something into this thing, like dun, 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 whatever, and listen to it later. It might make absolutely no sense the day after. But, <laughs> but for, <laughs> for this, this experience, I mean, we had some of the ideas beforehand that we were working on, but, um, but there were definitely a, a special season and a special flow to that, that record. And it was almost like, kind of, kind of like, well, I don't want to get it too spiritual, but it felt like God was inviting us to, you know how God sometimes in the Bible, and I feel like here in this life, invites us to do something that might come off silly in order to maybe test your faith, maybe uh, see if you, is he actually going to take that step, you know? <laughs> I feel like that, like booking a ticket back to Kenya, I felt like a really stupid thing to do. It was really hard to communicate to others why I do that, why I'd go to Kenya to, to play music. But I think that little step out in faith uh, was 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 it was a good uh, it was a right step for me at, at that time and and being down there was definitely special and yes and we also tried to, uh i think that that's uh interesting we tried to um just crank up the instruments and start in prayer and um and see if something would come from it so we have like two songs that are just titled like prayer jam one and prayer jam two mm -hmm. and they're probably more instrumental instrumental songs at least for now some more like jams, but there are definitely bits and pieces we're going to cut out and probably turn into songs. So, so that, that was new for me. And that was something we all wanted to, 
to do. And I'll, I guess this is also a little different, at least for me, because this is, uh, so we were doing a worship album. Uh, it's, it, uh, to me, that's feels a little more sacred than, than getting your own stuff out there. And where some albums are probably more like teaching or, you know, that, that can be all the, that can definitely also be worship songs on a regular yeah. album. But um, th this feels, it, it just felt like we needed to gather more in prayer around this project. Yeah. And a whole different feel than the, the bands that you've had. And like Captain yeah. Russell, and you don't write the same way. No, oh. That'll typically be me having an, a, a guitar riff or an, half a song yeah. or an idea, and then we'll crank it up and see what comes of it. Right. I have an interesting question, and any of you can answer. Um, do you have a song in particular that is still really meaningful to you uh, because of the way that came about or because of how it was written? You know, I would ask you what your favorite song has been, but uh, it's almost like asking, you know, who's your favorite child? <laughs> you know, uh, that's not a fair question, but anybody, what uh, what comes to mind when you think of a song and something that, that has a special place? Tough question. Mm. <laughs> I think uh, there was a song called Crystal River. Yes. Great uh, song. That I think means a lot to me because there was, um, when it came to the, right after uh, Will Will's brother killed himself, he had to go down to Louisiana to the funeral. And, you know, Will was a bit morbid with a lot of things. And so he wanted to go to the spot in which his brother had taken his life. And... Um, at the same time that he was sitting in the spot where his brother took his life, I was locked out of an apartment with only my guitar. And the wind started barreling through this breezeway intensely, so much so that I knew God was trying to get a hold of me. And I, I knew it was his presence. I knew what was going on. So I started to play the guitar and I wrote the music. And at the same time, he was sitting in that, that chair that his brother took his life and he wrote lyrics. And when he came back from the, from the funeral, I said, I have a song. He says, I have a song. And those are the lyrics to the, to the, the, you know, the guitar parts that I had written and it never changed. Wow. Wow. And it was a song about somehow having hope in a suicide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somehow, somehow, you know, like only God can do something like that. And it was him. 100% was him. And he just was using our circumstances. And whew, that was, that was unbelievable. N not a single lyric was changed. Not a single part of the guitars uh, or the, the songwriting was changed. It was powerful. It was song. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Guys, anybody else? Anything that sticks out to you? We're going to bring on Logan Thompson in just a few minutes from Symphony of Heaven. would like to hear what he's doing in the band, but in the few minutes we have left here, anything that comes to mind? Um, for me, uh, off this, the newer Applehead record, um, uh, well, first of all, I'm not, I struggle with lyrics a lot. So, um, it's, it's a challenge for me. I've never been a lyricist. I'm not a, an emotional guy. Um, it's hard to tap into that for me. So, um, two songs on that record, probably down being the first one, um, because it's personal, it's personal and, um, kind of an autobiography um, mm. time in my life that was, you know, filled with drugs and a lot of bad things and about my coming out of that. So it's a personal song and I don't write a lot of songs that are super personal to me um, just because I'm not that kind of great lyricist. lyricist. Um, but then the, the song that's probably most important to me personally 
on that record is the last song, The Destiny, um, which is, it's long, it's 13 minutes, but it, it started off as one song and my neighbor Chuck wrote most of the lyrics for it for me. And um, so the, the middle part of the song was the first part I had and um, I felt like it wasn't, wasn't finished. So I said, well, we need something that comes after it. Cause the, lyrically it covers from the garden of Eden to the end. So it's like, um, it didn't start that way though. The, the middle part of the song was uh, started when Jesus came out of the tomb. And um, so then I thought, well, it, it's not done. It needs something after it. So I, I asked him, write me something after that. So he wrote the, the lyrics for the, the last part. I wrote music to it. And then I thought, well, it's still not done. It needs something before it. So he, he started writing some lyrics. And I jumped in and wrote a bunch of lyrics. And we ended up having this uh, song that, like I said, started from point A and ended at point Z and ended up being 13 minutes. So that that was just really neat the way that came along. And, and I thought, I, I felt like a lot of that was a gift um, because it, it wasn't something I intended on writing or setting out to do. And um, all those ideas, they just, they came very quickly musically and everything. And it just all fell together just the way I wanted it. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's kind of it for me. Awesome. That's awesome. Parker, we have just a couple minutes left. Anything that stands out to you? Um, well, I kind of like the recurring theme of like all the pieces falling together with, yes. uh, you know, whether it's something like I, I've done that several times where you write a song and you're like kind of shelf it. And then, you know, you, you're writing a different song like two years later and you're like, wait, this is in the same key. And then suddenly it's like the pieces fall together and it's a complete song, you know? So that's super powerful, Jamie, about how you and your friend were writing at the same time at different locations. And then it just meshed up perfectly. That's crazy. That is it, super inspiring. It is inspiring. Well, you guys, it's a, it's a great thing to, as Parker said, to flex your creative muscle and, uh, and certainly songwriting does that guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to have you here. Appreciate your, your uh, willingness to, to share your, creativity with us. We got a, a, a great um, time with uh, Logan Thompson coming up and Matt is doing the interview on intense dose, we're calling it. Uh, kind of a little bit of um, insight into his life and to his band and uh, we're excited for that. Um, Matt, are you ready with an interview there? Matt, Match. Are you ready? Hello, folks. Welcome back to another edition of Your Intense Dose. My name is Match, and today I have some intensity from another band. Um, I'm just going to just say hi to this guy this is logan some of you guys might know him on the socials wait i'm going the wrong way this is logan and you might know him on the socials as pathos hey tell us what pathos is all about like uh why is it when i look up logan from symphony of heaven i find pathos okay so pathos is a i believe and if you and now that you're asking me I, it always escapes me when i have to explain it it's uh greek i believe um uh or latin one of those but it's basically like when we get the word like pathological, pathology, something to do inside. And you know, all of the cool bands that I liked growing up, a lot of them had stage names. You had Aboth from Immortal. You had, uh, you, you know, pick, uh, pick a different band. Uh, you had uh, Fire from El Gabor. All the guys from Slipknot. Like, exactly. I was like, you know what? I want a stage name. That way I can take this, not just for Symphony and maybe anything I do anywhere else could have that and it means something and it's it creates a, a, an air of uh theatricalness and in an appropriate way you know it's fun 
Yeah, because so we don't want you to be inappropriate or anything. No, like. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> So if anybody is just now tuning in, this is Logan, a.k.a. Pathos from Symphony of Heaven. And why don't you tell us about your band? What genre are you guys are, are like, just give us just give us a little introduction. Symphony of Heaven is what well, I label it as melodic blackened death metal. So it is it, it's got a little bit of all the uh, cold extreme north type of sounds and a little bit of a American death metal every now and then throwing in there. Uh, basically just all my influences that I like. So, you know, you've got your kind of, uh, kind of maybe some older in flames type of sound. You've got a little, little bit of maybe a behemoth, older behemoth sound. Ooh. You got a lot of demo, uh, sounds. You've got some Metallica in there. Um, you know, um, tradition like old school or atmospheric black metal. It just, it, it's kind of just, that's the only way I can describe it as we still evolve in our sound it's basically death metal with a lot of blackened and melodic influences yeah so. definitely i can jam to you guys anytime now just so that people know who haven't ever heard you guys do you guys have like like doom vocals hardcore vocals uh you know do people call it cookie monster vocals like where do you guys fit in on your vocal spectrum there's been somebody that called it cookie monster vocals i don't describe it as cookie monster vocals it's more of a um uh, the be the best uh, description I've ever heard was entombed style vocals, which is kind of almost somewhere in between traditional low growls and almost a hardcore vocal style where it's almost yelled, but there's enough gravel in it. Uh, thankfully, I just people have told me that I have a, somewhat of a unique vocal style, and I think so. You know, yeah, and so that's been a, re a really nice thing. So it, it it's I can do the lows. Not really the traditional black metal highs, but it's somewhere in that middle, you know, kind of chesty kind of yeah. um, feral, emotional, and just just dirty. I guess is the best. I dig way it. To it. Yeah, I dig it. You know, my wife, she's more into like like the doom and metal. That's kind of where she's at, and I'm more into like hardcore and like you know new metal metal core stuff and you know what you guys are like right there for us you know and like we can both listen to you and enjoy you i mean but we listen to pancreatic by our you know also and we listen to all these yeah. other bands and stuff and you know we try to get like the the the, the indie metal stuff and oh, yeah. uh yeah a lot of stuff on end times productions like crimson Moon, oh yeah all them yeah oh my god love them guys, guys so much those guys are amazing I, I and they cleaned up their production on the last one and i was like hey, what happened i even like you guys even more they're the <laughs> only they're the only band logo that i have on my writing vest oh so, nice i mean oh well, well I, I, you guys were actually I, there was some debate about putting yours on there but you know i only well, we would have we we appreciate even the thought we know how much time and effort that stuff takes yeah right so. <laughs> oh my gosh nobody has any clue all right so anyway uh one of the next questions that i always ask is where do you guys fall in the spectrum like the spiritual spectrum of like christians in a band christian band there's a christian or two in the band so we reflect those kind of lyrics like where do you guys you know how do you feel comfortable presenting yourself about all of that i i think we feel comfortable presenting ourselves as um both um I started this band and it's it, it, like, you know, like I was a Christian before I was a metalhead. Mm. So, and I know that there's a lot of uh, semantics debate about the titles of Christian metal or not, and that people can mean well on both sides. Mm -hmm. And there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, agreement on that. You, and that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. So I'm just kind of like, well, we're both, we're Christian metal and we're Christians who play metal and we're a metal band. Like you can't, I'm 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 going to be who I am and say what I think and I'm going to act the same playing my music as I do anywhere else in my life. This is me. Everything I do flows out of my belief in Jesus. That's it. You know, as much as I fail, that's my foundation and my guiding light in everything I do in my life. So my music is going to reflect what I believe. So, yeah, call it Christian metal call it metal if you're not a christian but you still like the music then it's just a metal band you know maybe if it brings you some comfort throughout your day and you enjoy it that's not a bad thing that's i'm blessing you that way as well yeah um, and you kind of have to give people a lot of material out there you have to kind of spread yourself out you have to make yourself yeah. 
available. I mean, everything is so saturated now with all of the different devices and yeah. platforms and everything. And you've been actually kind of diving into that, right? Like, it seems like you have a lot of shorts out there. You've been doing a lot of clips, right? We, we try because I understand that, you know, for one, it, it, I, I was, uh, I always think about it this way. If I had a lawnmower business, right. And, you know, and I'm a Christian who has a lawnmower business and I know I'm going to do things the right way and just be out there and, you know, I'm gonna make money, but I'm also gonna serve people or whatever. You have to let people know you have the business or you're never gonna have an opportunity to do it. That means you put a big billboard up on the highway. It says Pathos is lawn mowing service, you know, and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Getting yourself out there, letting people know, if you, especially if you work hard and you believe in what the product that you're offering, if you look at it in terms of like a business, it's it's totally legitimate and people do it in all other aspects of life. It, you, you just have to make sure that you are doing something that you know is worthwhile. You have to give people a reason to give you their time because time is such a precious commodity in mm. life. And there's so saturated, so much saturation with a lot of good stuff and art. That, what is going to give people the reason to listen to you for 30 mm. minutes or an hour or look you up online and, and get to know the history of your band? So you've got to give them that. And you want to. We did that. You know, I had yeah. bands I loved to listen to, and I would go and search their stuff because it meant something to me. You know, and you're giving people bites because you're doing little covers here and there. You're giving people like little up and comers riff happy moments on TikTok, yeah. right? Like yes. you guys are giving them, giving us all the hors d'oeuvres along with like the the entree, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep, it's like a buffet. You, know, you got to start somewhere, I guess, too. Right you know? on. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think it's done pretty good for you because you guys have like a a pretty big, well, a well-known band that you're playing with, right? Are you guys opening for someone in the near future? That is correct. We were offered a show opportunity uh, May 19th in Louisville at Headliners to open for uh, Deicide. And so that is definitely uh, something that most people kind of raise some eyebrows at. And uh, th that is not lost on us, but uh, we are always happy to play any show opportunity that we get. Yeah. And, you know, that. And it, then, it, 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 yeah. Be because Jesus is number one with you guys, are you tight with like a church group and stuff like that? Because would you tell your the youth pastor or the pastor of a church that you're with, hey, we're playing with Deicide. Maybe the kids should stay home that night and maybe like the college folks should go like how how are you approaching anything like that because they well, definitely um, bring out a different crowd i've seen them that before. is yeah that's the thing it says all ages uh I, you know and yeah, yeah that's a judgment call everybody would have to make on their own um but uh you know as far as like is the band uh you know i uh, we've uh, been recently attending a great church uh and we're really tight with everybody there it's been really good and so i mean i will let i always tell them about our shows and and uh, they'll, they'll it, I don't think they'll pr truly understand the gravity of this show because mm -hmm. it's kind of like already going to be in like metal history just because this type of thing doesn't happen very often. Right. Um, but, you know, we're opening for a band called Self God mm -hmm. four weeks be before them. So, I mean, I, I, I believe uh, personally that, uh, you know, there is a reason God is putting us in these positions. Um, I don't know what that is yet fully. I have some ideas, but I'm going to act the same there as I would at work at church. Um, we're professionals. Gonna, yeah, but aren't you, know? you thinking you're going to get some people that are more aggressively Christian haters you know, that's, at that show, right? Uh, that's, a, that's a possibility that it's crossed my mind. Um, I'm not worried about that. Um, you know, that that is really one of those things that uh you know if god is for us who can be against us that that goes in any part of, of of my life that you know why am i supposed to fear anybody i mm. i struggle with anxiety and fear over stupid things so per, you know per, perhaps this is also a slight way you know the the mind kind of says oh man we might get some people there that don't like it we've had that at normal shows and is this we've at a pub or a club this is like more of a club, I believe. Decent sized venue. Uh, a lot of bands come through uh, and play headliners, I think. So you're not going to get bottles thrown at you. <laughs> oh, we might. We might. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, 
I, I don't know. I just put that all in God's hands. Just I would let anywhere, anything else in life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, this to me needs to be something that uh, is not necessarily a special thing, even though I guess it could be depending on how you look at it. Uh, but we're just going to go and do our thing. Um, there, and because we, that's what we would do anywhere else. Right. You know, yeah. and for 30 minutes, that stage is what we determine it to be. Right. You know, and so awesome. we, we have just as much right to play there as anybody else. And you so guys have a 30 America. minute set. That's that's really well, good. I'm just, I'm just assuming we do. I'm sure. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm 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 and there's four bands that night, so I'm assuming we'll probably at least get 30. Wow. So. That'd be great. Well, you guys are definitely the right band in the right place at the right time for that, man. I, yeah. I wish I could go out there. Um, where is that going to be at? Louisville, Kentucky, May 19th. Kentucky. Wow. Okay. Yep. Shoot, man. If I had like stupid money right now, I, know, I, honest to I God, would go out there just to see you guys. Oh, yeah. That would be well, really we, cool. Yeah, it'd be a, it's going to be, uh, there's already much talk online uh from you just do a i'm so like i know there's people gonna be talking about this and sure enough there is people talking about this mm. um i keep waiting for like metal injection or metal sucks or lamb goat or somebody to kind of pick up on this and <laughs> oh no wouldn't that be horrible <laughs> you know get right. her name out there you know i mean i hey. have no control over that but <laughs> yeah any publicity is good publicity it worked for the deadpool movie originally when that came out you know yeah. like and he didn't even pay for publicity and now yeah. we're all we're all marketing something we're, we all yes. have some kind of persona to put out there yes. well that's great man uh you know if people want to get a hold of you guys or find you online do i send them to Bandcamp and have them look up symphony of heaven or what's your best suggestion what would you say the best way to there, there's a couple good ways to get a hold of us uh we okay what walk with me here there's two symphony of heaven facebooks Okay. There's one with the uh, old, it, it, it hasn't been up. The old one hasn't been updated in two or three years. It got hacked. I can't okay. get into it. It's just sitting there. Don't go to that one. You'll know that there's nothing's been updated. The other one has less followers and is updated. So there's that page. We have Instagram at Symphony of Heaven. Uh, you, it'll, it'll populate on there. Um, and then we have our website, symphonyofheaven.com with hashtags and, or with, things in the middle you can google symphony of heaven it's one of the first things that come up uh so we have an email that you can get a hold of us there we have a discord links to our discord on all oh you're shows. kidding oh yes yeah we've been tr constantly trying to grow the discord that's the best place oh dude it's more uh it's more of a a little bit more um uh personal that you can talk to people on there and get to know people so we we definitely it's just a simple google search for symphony of heaven populates pretty well with all of our information uh, that's pretty sweet. You know, uh, this is completely random. I'm just going to pull this out of the air. You know, you have a lot of bands uh, making comic books. You guys should put out a comic book. You guys should think about it. Have you seen like Demon Hunter's got them? Um, uh, um, uh, Beartooth's got them. Um, August Burns Red, I think, got one. That was uh, pro prophetic and providential on your part, uh, somewhat, because that is something I have wanted to do and thought about. For many years um and it might not be a comic book per se because those are so expensive to really produce well mm. um but as far as like a lore around the band and kind of inserting ourselves into a larger un pre-existing universe that is happening and taking place and for anybody that has paid close enough attention because it's kind of uh, under the radar, you'll probably have been able to tell what that is. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And um, it, it's just very edifying and makes everybody think and dig a little bit deeper into what we're saying, you know, because there's like, let me open the door for you. There's a whole thing back here for me to show you. Come with me. Let me show, you know, it, it, it's pretty interesting. So I follow you. That there. rocks. That's cool. I'm going to have to deep dive that after we're done, because I mean, I've seen you guys play. I remember hearing about you guys and picking up something right away. Actually, my wife. Yeah, I think my wife actually got your stuff before I did. And uh, yeah, now you're giving us just a little bit more something else to chew on. I love it. I love it. OK, <laughs> man. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us on Intense Dose today. It's always a pleasure. And 
if and I'm just saying this to all you sanctuarians and everybody out there, if you haven't got a chance to look up Symphony of Heaven yet, please do because they are well worth it. I love what they're doing. I love where their hearts are at. These guys really have a good message. They've played our sanctuary stages in the past before. And uh, I would dare say that they could be a sanctuary band. I would anything I'm doing, and I always put it in Bob's ear. We always got to bring SOH with us. So, love you guys. God bless you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Anytime. All right, bro. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Right. Good, good stuff. Thank you so much, Match. And uh, thank you also, Logan. You know, I just wanted to mention real quick that um, speaking of comic books, you know, we have the best one. We really do. The Crimson Six. And uh, there you can see Crimson Six Volume 2 is just getting ready to come out. So make sure you get a hold of that. John, are you here with me? John is our illustrious producer. Good morning, John. Good morning, sir. How are you? Yes, good. So, John, great show today. And as always, great job with it. John John is the guy that uh, that switches all the switches and makes sure that it's all seamless and, and uh, does a great job. John, we have a chaotic resemblance with us next week um excited to have those guys on the show um there it is this is next week um we uh you know these guys are they remind me a little bit john of disciple early disciple absolutely don't you think they're uh yeah they're just a lot of energy really a great ministry in your face ministry and uh really great guys i'm excited to have them on the show coming up also in a few weeks the guys from flood will be here with us gary lanier guy ritter and uh we're going to talk about the new flood album that's just been released really great album we'll talk also a little bit about um stop the bleeding They've just put together the tribute band. Talk about a throwback. That's a, a, a nice paying a nice homage to uh, their debut release. Which yes. Is great. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. You know, they, I, I played on one of the Tourniquet albums. Well, I actually did speaking parts on a couple more, but um, they haven't mentioned that yet. Going to have to go back and listen. New, you know, I played the... I call it the satanic calliope in Skizik's Dilemma. I oh, played you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, insider information. That's, That's great. Again, huh? Yeah. So, John, thank you once again for a great show. It's and an folks, honor to serve here, and we hope everybody's walking away with some great information. We uh, I love being up late night and putting all the elements together to bring the best possible show that we can. Yeah. It's important that our industry is... Uh, uh, very well represented, and we're thankful for every single one of you guys that are tuning in on the mornings. Please share this out on your social media, uh, so this way after hours people can get a chance to watch and uh, always welcome any feedback that we can get. Yes, absolutely. Once again, folks, show is brought to you by Headbangers Brew, our newest blend. I keep saying 10 blends. It's actually nine but our newest one called Jamaican Me Looney. If you haven't ordered it yet, please do. And you have eight more besides that to choose from. So um, that's our own coffee, Headbangers Brew. Folks, once again, thank you for joining me. Next week, don't forget Chaotic Resemblance and a few surprises. Next show, don't miss it. Folks, I hope you have a great day, and don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Hey guys, DJ Rev here with the Warriors Night Out Radio Broadcast. Join us every week right here for 60 minutes of the best soul-shaking, bone-shattering, spirit-charging, faith-based rock and metal. Break the cycle! 
featuring all your favorite hard rock and heavy metal favorites from across the U.S. and around the world. The Warriors Night Out Radio Broadcast, the war cry of the faceless generation. Be sure to find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter X at WNO Rocks.